up crying. With this, my you fresh party is guaranteed. Can I get porky? Can I get good taste? Can I get triangle? Yes, it's all sorted. Mom. Makes your kids smarter. Wow, party assured. Yes, it's party time. One drinks that taste so good, that's a refresher. Makes your kids smarter, make them feel energized. I've got the drinks for you, we made them just for you. Hey, you fresh. You fresh comes in different flavors and shapes. You fresh, why my eye is fresh? We welcome you once again to edition, another edition of Amuka TV's broadcast. Aaron Monyo in our midst. He happens to be the founder of the Christ Healing Hand Ministry International, Ghana, Accra, West Africa. Today we have him because the last time when we spoke with him, he gave us insight into a couple of issues that is confronting the Christian society. So it was right as well also to come so we could also have another admonition to that effect. More often than not, we hear of Christians complaining of the fact that they pray the faster, but yet their requests are not forthcoming. So we would like to delve into that and also know the reasons why some of these things are happening to the Christian society and the way forward. Bishop Aaron, we once again welcome to Amkati. Thank you. Please, more often than not, we get to hear of Christians complain of the fact that times are hard and that they've been going to church, they've been praying, yet their requests, so to speak, are not forthcoming. In your point of view, what do you think are some of the causes and your advice in this regard? Yeah. In actual fact, Christians' requests are being answered day in, day out. If somebody says request not being asked, answered, it means that the person is not doing the right thing. Because one, Jesus taught us how to pray. Let's look at what the Bible says concerning prayer. Matthew chapter 6. Let's look from verse 9 to verse 13. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, if you want to understand what Christ said, it means that Christ was talking about the mystery of earth and heaven in this prayer. He told the disciples or the world at large that when we are praying to our Father in heaven, we should pray that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, what is the will of God in heaven? In heaven, the angels worship the Lord. They hallow his name. Do Christians do the same today? Do they pray in that honor, honoring God, leaving their heart desire and their will in the hands of God? No. So, Bishop, as you are indicating, it means because of the fact that Christians, so to speak, had actually lost trust in the aspect of praying and also giving God his product and all of that. That has really created a couple of issues, specifically in the sense that when you look at Ghana now, we see a lot of young men and women dying. Is it because of such issues that confront the Christian society? Yes, you know, when Christ said, hallowed be their name, it means that holiness. In heaven, the angels don't fornicate. You see, the angels to the will of God. So if Christians remain in holiness, no fornication, will you have HIV? Will you have uh, uh, syphilis, gonorrhea, and the rest? Will not. So holiness op open heavens, and the will of God come into a life of man. 
So the first thing is Christians must maintain holiness. Without holiness, the Spirit of God cannot come. Without the holiness, the Holy Spirit cannot work. So that's the first thing Christians must do. Secondly, Christians are chasing the world too much. Instead of the world chasing us, we are chasing the world because we are the light of the world. Are you getting my point? So if Christians can be patient and wait on, on the Lord, the rains fall at each season, okay? So the will of God will come in our life. Today, a young Christian from fresh from university want to ride in V8. That is not the will of God. You see, if you take a mango tree or any tree, coconut tree, the tree, when you plant a tree, it grew small, 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 gradually before it begins to bear fruit. Christian youth are not willing to grow naturally. So if you want to see God, you must look at his nature. Look at nature, that's how God behaves. So I always say that any big tree was a small tree. Any big tree was a small tree. That's awesome. Again, Bishop, more often than not, as I already indicated, we see Christians paying his sums of money for shows. But when you ask such a Christian to even come to a service, maybe an all night, the Christian will tell you I'm tired. But the person spends time to watch a program at the Trade Fair Center, uh, let's say at the National Theater and all of that, waste the time, panicate and all of that. What would be your message to them as well? Yeah, that's how the world is going astray. Even Daniel said it, that when slavery increase, sin will increase. I think that Christians must trace their route back to God and have delight in God. You know, someone said it. Oh, you see, blessed are those who do not work in the counsel of the wicked or ungodly. So if Christians want to be blessed, they must rather focus on the work of God, put the investment properly. Going to watch uh, uh, plays and the rest, the entertainment. But at what level will you want to entertain yourself? Are you getting my point? I'm not saying that it's not good, but the, the degree of it is what I'm talking about. Are you getting my point? So I think Christians should rather take care of the vulnerable in society. You see, and it's a moral issue as well. When we were young, when churches are doing programs, you see them inviting headmasters, head teachers, people, people of honor. So it's a moral issue. All of a sudden, the church begins to invite burgers, rich men to come and chair their functions. Some who are not even church members to come and chair their function. So the message the church itself is telling the youth of the church that, hey, for you to be honored, you might be rich. So the youth are chasing, call the church today is teaching them. So please, what would be your message to such uh, churches who normally take delight in inviting the so-called burgers in order that they think they can be able to give them money in terms of functions and all of that. So that the aspect of we having to rush for cash, especially in line with the youth, is very, very appalling. You see a young boy at the age of, let's say, 20, who will do everything for a car, and most of them engage in sakawa and all of that. We would like to find out your final advice in this respect so that we will have a change of mind towards that in order that Ghana will develop. Yeah, my advice is that the church must preach salvation message to the world. Because the burger, the rich man you are bringing to your church to come and donate money, the question is, is he saved? I will preach salvation to that person. If you invite a person to come to your function, don't give him a high position, invite him to come and hear a salvation message and be saved. That's what I want to say. And the church must... Uh, stop chasing wealth. If you want to put up a mega chapel, no. Even Stephen said that a time will come. People will call God under shares, under trees, and the Lord will respond. You see, so I have never, I've seen that in smaller churches, under trees, 
God performed wonders than in mega buildings. I witnessed a lot in myself that when people are few, when the, the place is under a shed, God performed wonders than when you put a mega building. God does not dwell in those things. So I want to pray that the church should begin to preach morality and salvation message to the world. By so doing, the country will be good. So I think that the church itself must purge itself. Yes, the church needs uh, to purge itself. The church has to purge itself in order that we will be able to eradicate the bad nuts in the system. Finally, Bishop, a Christian will do all sorts of things, and when a pastor or a renowned man of God, the bishop or yourself, asks the person, the person tells the individual, when I die, that is the end. In your point of view, do you think when someone dies, that is the end? <laughs> no, that was not the end. You know, I was also in that dilemma. To be honest with you, I was not born in a pagan home. Even though my grandparents were pagans. But my father was an elder of a church. Okay? But because of where I was born, uh, where I schooled, the environment at school, you know, the southern voter, uh, the, uh, the culture of the people believe in a reincarnation. And they give us names which sound that people reincarnate, reincarnate like Dogbe and uh, other names. That shows that somebody went and coming back. has come back. Mm -hmm. So I also believe that God can never punish people by sending them to hell. So those are, I'll be telling my father that uh, you are deceiving people that there is heaven. Until something happened to me in 1990, I went to dance. During the dance, I was having uh, my head, my heart was pain. Me I, I, that day, I drank, I smoked. So uh, as I, I should be taken back to the dormitory, and I went. Then I went to I don't know it, it was a coma or vision. I don't know what happened. Then I entered into hell. Then in hell, I saw so many things. I saw people, I know that they were past there. I could see clerical there. They were being tortured. Hell has stages of punishment. So when that was happening to me, surprisingly, I was not feeling the, the heat of the fire. And I could see somebody standing be, be, beside me. I couldn't see the face of the person. Then I told the person that, ah, what happened before this person was here? And he told me that, ah, this person, because he fornicated, this abortion, this because of stealing, this because of that. And this pastor, he told me that he committed the sin of Judas Iscariot. That, that asked, what is the sin of Judas Iscariot? The person told me that Judas sold Jesus Christ for money. So any man of God who sells the word of God and take money, commit the same sin Judas committed. So, so this pastor I'm seeing here, I was seeing there at that time. They were taking money, they were selling Jesus Christ. Then I said, ah, I don't like this place. The minute I said, I don't like this place, a hand held me and I appear in heaven. Wow. Yes, me, no pastor preached to him before, wow. before I accepted Christ. Wow. So when I appear in heaven, heaven is beyond description. Because I travel a lot. I went to U U US, UK, Canada, Australia, Poland. I've never seen any place which is beautiful by heaven before. Wow. Yes. The golden nature of the place, the, the serene, the flower, the, the music, the whole place. Oh, you, you, I said, I want to remain here. Then the person said that I'm not qualified to be there. Then all of a sudden, they brought a banner. On that banner, they wrote Christ Apostolic Church. Then the person told me that if I wake up, I should go there and be saved. So I woke up. When I woke up, I realized that the pain on my heart was not there. It was not severe again. So I decided to go back to the dance. But when I walked out of the room, the whole world was in total darkness. So I panicked. And I went back to the room on my bed. Then I went to hell again. The same process repeated. I went to heaven again. The same process repeated, and they showed me the banner again. And I woke up the second time. Then, after that, I was still hearing the music of the dance. You see, reggae, so in those days I was... So, I wanted to go out again wow. to the place. When I walk out, the same thing happened. The whole world was in total darkness. Then I panicked. I came back to the room. 
I went to hell again. So basically, it was more or less uh, a message God was giving you. I think so. So I went to hell again. I went to heaven. Then when I wake up, I realize that mm, if I go again, maybe I will die. So I decided not to go again. So heaven is real. That's how come I actually went to Christ Apostle before. Nobody preached to me before I accept Christ. It was that dream that I have. Since then, my mind changed. And I believe that there is heaven, there is hell. So those who think that there is no heaven, there is hell, they, they should stop. Show the youth. They, they should stop crying. Heaven is real. Jesus said it, that if it was not so, I will tell you. I will get to my point. So, so why Jesus said it, and it's real, I think every Christian must work that salvation and enter the kingdom of God. Because heaven is real. Heaven is real, likewise hell. So if you are a youth watching me all over the world, if you are a child of God, if you are a pagan whatsoever, as Bishop Aaron Munyon had rightly indicated, hell is real, likewise heaven. So make sure you play your cast well in order that when the trumpet sounds, you have a place befitting. In not, if not, it's likely something probably you don't want is what you'll be given. So the choice is yours. I'll go back to him again as we bring the conversation to an end. Hey, you know, this uh, death, 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 what a shock. I think it wasn't biblical. You see, God said we, should, we shall live up to 120 years. It was David who, through calamity of life, said that uh, 70 or 80, those ones are full of pain. But I still believe that if we reject what David said, you can still live beyond 70, 80 years. Wow. If only you do the will of God. Wow. So the church must preach salvation, holiness to the youth. And those deaf, deaf will not be there. In my church, rarely before somebody die. Because we make sure we preach salvation to them. That's why you cannot see the crowd. But when you come, when you come, we will tell you, don't do this, don't do that. You know, Apostle Paul, when he was preaching in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he said it, that no foundation that any other man lay, and the whole Christ has laid. And he was a master builder. And on that foundation, some are building with gold, some with diamonds, some with wood, some with grass. All shall pass through fire. If any man's work survive, he shall receive a reward in heaven. If any man's work suffer loss, that person shall have no reward, but he himself shall be saved if he pass through that fire. What that means to a Christian is that when we are following pastors and they are not making us gold, because gold is cast to get. So to get a true Christian, a holy Christian, a righteous person, is very difficult. When you get ten souls, one or two may, may remain. But the chaff are many. You can go out and get a lot of bola and you get my point. Bolas are common. So if the, the pastor lose the laws, or you can wear anything, you can drink, you can have boyfriend, you can have girlfriend, you can be in courtship, you can be in relationship, the church will be flooded. A will flood the church. The pastor will get money, all right. But when the judgment sound, all of us will pass without further judgment. And some of us will lose. But we ourselves will pass. The pastor is very much aware that when he passes judgment, he passes, you enter the kingdom of God. I mean, if I enter the kingdom of God, and I'm even a laborer in the kingdom of God. I'm in heaven. I'm not in hell. So that's what the Christian must know, that the pastor I'm following, is he making me a gold or is he making me a chaff? If you're a chaff, then you have to repent from today and try to be good. If you are a chaff, you have to repent from today and try to be a good. So basically, this will bring us to the end of today's broadcast. We are so, so fortunate to have Bishop Aaron Monyo today as well as to educate all and sundry as to the need to believe solely in God. Because without God, who are we? We thank you all for watching and we look forward to seeing you again some other time as we give you in-depth analysis into God's word in order that we all benefit from that. We thank you once again all over the world for keeping us. God bless you all for watching. Bishop, we thank you also for God bless you.